Well, good morning, Wednesday morning, and we're continuing in Samuel 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12 uh, through to chapter 3 verse 21. And I think when you think about these two chapters, the thing that we're meant to really see is that this is a section that's telling us that how you respond to God's word really matters. Um, or what the impact of the absence of God's word is like. Because when you meet those that are meant to be carrying forth God's word, the priests, you're introduced to them and they're terrible. Uh, Verse 12 of chapter 2, Eli's sons were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord. And that image of disregard and disobedience is actually going to be a pattern that we're going to see uh, echoed throughout this book and what it looks like when someone is obedient to God's word and humbles themselves. So uh, we meet the, the characters of Eli and his son, Hophni and Phinehas, and, uh, and then we're introduced to, to, again to the little boy, Samuel. Remember, this is the one that's been dedicated to the Lord, and he ultimately will be the one who is going to replace Uh, the leadership of Israel. He'll take Eli's place and the place that his sons ought to occupy. Uh, The the reason? Well, Eli's sons are stealing the best part of God's sacrifices. Um, People will come to bring their offerings to the Lord, but they'll threaten anyone who doesn't give them the raw meat. They don't want the boiled stuff. It doesn't taste as good and they don't want the fat burned off. And so here we see this picture of disobedience. They've been told how to behave. They do the very opposite. But Samuel humbly serves the Lord and uh, you see that even the way in which his mum faithfully comes year and year and dresses him in the ephod um, that lovingly made by her and a picture of obedience and in response God blesses Samuel but he promises to destroy Hophni and Phinehas. And in order to confirm that, that that's going to be his position, uh, God appears to Eli as the prophet and tells him what is going to take place, that his family is soon going to die. None of them will live to old age and they're going to live their lives out in poverty. And then after what has been decades of silence where God hasn't spoken through to the prophets, um, he begins to speak again. And he speaks to this little boy, Samuel, who humbly listens. In fact, Samuel hasn't heard from the Lord before, which is an interesting thing, isn't it? Because his name means God hears. And now Samuel needs to hear God's voice. And at first he thinks it's Eli until Eli says, no, no, this is God. And so the next time he calls, respond by saying, your servant is listening, which is what Samuel does. And the word of the Lord comes to Samuel. In fact, Samuel's now called as Israel's next prophet. Um, and the word that comes to Samuel is all about the destruction that he's previously told Eli is going to come to his house. And Eli knows now that Samuel is going to be the next prophet. He instructs him not to withhold anything from that which God has told him. And in doing so, he hears of the fate of his children and of his own leadership. And all of that is going to take place uh, such that Eli knows it. And in fact, all of Israel from the north to the south, from Dan to Beersheba, will know. Um, Now, in chapter four, we see this then lived out. We'll come to this uh, next week. But Hophni and Phinehas quickly killed in a battle against the Philistines. Uh, The ark tragically is captured. Uh, This place where God dwells is now taken. And on the day that that takes place, Eli dies hearing the news and he leaves Samuel um, as the one who will lead Israel. And he will be, as we've said last week, this transition figure. And all that God has said, God's word, has come true. Some people have been ignoring God's word and it's been fatal. And some people, Samuel, listening to it, and they have been rewarded. Eli's fall and Samuel, as he rises to power, is all dependent on how they've responded to God's word. And because of Eli and his family's failure to obey and his failure to teach his sons the word, they are brought low, humbled. But Samuel, even though he's not heard the word of God before, humbly listens, responds and is lifted up. And that idea about the connection between leadership and listening to God's word will be echoed continually throughout the book of Samuel, such that 
King Saul and King David will rise and fall based on how they listen to God's word and respond to it and how they ignore it and how they hear it in the word of the prophets um, spoken to them. And Samuel is going to be the first of those prophets. And when you think about that idea, the word of the Lord coming through the prophets, uh, maybe that ought to trigger something in us as we think about, oh, that's interesting. That's exactly what Jesus is, the word made flesh, God's word dwelling among us, his prophetic word. Hebrews picks up on this in chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the past, God has spoken to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And that picture then to see that Jesus is in fact God's final and ultimate prophet. Unlike passive, sinful, unhearing Eli, Uh, But very much like the faithful Samuel, Jesus perfectly communicates God's word to us. And so as we think upon that, we realize that it all depends on how we respond to the word, how we respond to Jesus, God's word in the flesh, um, whether or not we would ignore that and turn a deaf ear to that or humble ourselves. See, Jesus is actually the living proof that our humility leads to life. Even though we might die, the humble are lifted up and the proud are brought low. So the encouragement even in these early chapters in 1 Samuel is not to be like those who ignore and shun God's word. Don't be like Eli and his sons who, full of pride, abuse God's word and take the commands and twist them just to suit themselves but instead to come humbly before the word of the Lord and to submit to it. And Jesus promises that when we come humbly to the word and submit, that he hears and he lifts us up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would you help us today to think about how we respond to your word and look to the warning in these chapters of those who ignore it or use it for their own benefit, but rather, Lord, that we might humbly come before you And as we do that, we see Jesus as the word of the Lord who raises up the humble and strikes down the proud. Lord, would you look into our proud hearts today and lead us to repentance. Lead us to your word where lovingly we find the one who lifts up the humble and brings life that is everlasting. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're a God who speaks. Help us to hear, to listen and to obey. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.